Less than one in ten Europeans buys online from other EU countries. The process is simply too complicated. Legal differences between EU countries is one of the remaining barriers to the internal market. To boost cross-border trade, cut costs and give customers greater choice, the EU has drafted a common European sales law. Last year I tried to buy a Kindle online for my husband as a birthday present, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. I did everything I was required to to complete my order, but despite that in the end they said they wouldn't deliver to Bulgaria. Both in her private life and as a dentist, Maria has found that she has greater choice and better prices if she buys her goods from abroad. But she quickly realized that things were not going to be that easy for her as a Bulgarian citizen. I wanted to purchase supplies for my dental surgery from a German company via the internet. But the next day they sent me an email saying they couldn't process my order as it had to be 300 euros minimum for delivery to Bulgaria. Maria didn't want to place such a big order unless she could be sure about delivery times, packaging and sales documents which might not be compatible with the Bulgarian tax system. In the end, she did find a way to buy what she needed, but it wasn't easy. I order goods from Germany to be sent to a friend who lives there. She then sends the parcels to me or I collect them when I visit her. So that's the roundabout way I found to get hold of my goods. Bulgaria is one of the countries in Europe where it's most complicated to purchase cross-border goods online. People living in Belgium, Latvia, Malta and Romania face similar problems. For them, around 70% of cross-border transactions end in failure. The European average is hardly better. Only four in ten cross-border deals work out. In many cases, we're not given any explanation. Sometimes the sellers simply state in their terms and conditions that they don't deliver to Bulgaria. Sometimes they say there's a problem with the credit card. In many cases, traders mention the legal framework as part of the problem. A seller can turn down an online transaction with someone in another country if he doesn't feel comfortable with the laws and regulations that would apply to the deal. This e-commerce policy expert explains. It's often a big legal challenge to be aware of all the details of the rights that apply to a consumer transaction in other countries. And in particular for small companies, it's just too much for them to bear. And therefore they choose the simple solution, which is simply not to sell across borders. Only 9% of consumers in Europe buy online from other countries. The same small number of sellers take on the challenge of cross-border trading. In response, the EU has decided to draft a common European sales law. Family-run business Bivolino is among the first in Belgium to expand online to new markets. Today the company sells its products in 19 EU countries, but at what price? First of all, you have to invest in your brand abroad. That's the first step. Then there's the language barrier. So you need native speakers to help you in each country. That also represents a considerable cost for a small company. There's the whole question of online payment, which varies from country to country. Other major obstacles include differences in VAT and consumers' rights. 
So, for example, in some countries, the maximum delay for returning goods is two weeks. In others, it's only one week. So there again, we need to have a different approach, according to the country. Every business transaction is based on a contract. Here again, rules vary between countries, making it more costly to export abroad. It's estimated that each additional export market costs a business an average of 10,000 euros. In order to sell goods in another EU country, you first need to analyze that country's legislation. This means you need to hire a legal expert there, who will help you understand how the law differs from your own country. So the European Commission has decided to draft a common European sales law, CESL, so that sellers don't have to cope with up to 26 different versions. It would be applied on a voluntary basis. Traders could choose to sell their products abroad according to a single set of rules, which would be an alternative to the national contract law. Both parties to a cross-border sales deal in the EU would be able to choose which of the two they want to apply. The aim is to simplify expansion to new markets for businesses and give consumers more choice. European cross-border trade, um, obviously in the area of, uh, of e-commerce and, and online commerce, could be a lot better. I think we're nowhere near where we should be and the European Commission has realized that as well. The European Common Sales Law can have an impact uh, on the problems we now face with a lack of cross-border trade. I think one of the key problems is consumer trust. And anything that can help in strengthening that trust will of course help cross-border trade. Another obstacle yet to be addressed is the whole question of transport, delivery and postal services. The ultimate aim being a harmonization of rules in what many see as a future United States of Europe.